fact that one of the songs the middle school will be doing sometime, uh, probably later this month, so we'll have fun with that. As we gather together for worship, we, we do so with the knowledge that we want God here with us, so I would invite you to bow with me as we have a word of prayer inviting his presence among us. Lord God, we are thankful for this day and for the time we have to be in a house where we can worship freely the one who created us, the one who's promised to always be with us, to never leave us, nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst and pray to be here among us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we open our service together, we'll be singing all hail the power of Jesus' name. That is, that is our way of praising him for what he's done. And from there, we will transition into a song, Learning to Lean. If we can praise him for his mighty works, we can lean on him in our times of trouble. Let's stand together as we sing. <clears throat>
remain standing as we proclaim our faith by reciting together the Apostles' Creed. Let us join. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Won't you please be seated? This morning, as we turn to our scripture reading, it comes to us from the book of Joshua, which actually follows up what had been done at Vacation Bible School, where they were being led by Moses. Joshua was their next leader, and in the first chapter, beginning in the sixth verse, we read these words. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God's words for Joshua. I believe they're also God's words for us. Our next song encourages, encourages us as the church to rise up together to be his servants. So... This will be the first time we've done this as a congregation on him. I'll do the first portion, and then I'll invite you to stand and join with me for the, the second half. If you feel comfortable joining in, please join in with me.
Amen. As we go into our time of prayer this morning, uh, before we go into our uh, full prayer, I want to uh, lift up our teachers and administrators and school system folks who are uh, going back this week. Uh, first of all, if you are teacher, administration, support personnel with Lakeview Christian School, would you stand please? Maybe just too tired to stand. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you are with uh, public or private school, home school, you're a teacher, you're administrator, you're support personnel, please stand. Somebody's just hiding at this point. Okay, here we go. <laughs> if you would join me in, um, uh, if you would join me as we lift our teachers, our support personnel, and our students in prayer as they get back to school this coming week. Let's pray. Almighty God, we lift up to you this new school year. Father, as we go back under, uh, again, challenging circumstances, Lord, we ask for your guidance and your wisdom uh, through this season. Lord, we lift up to you these teachers, Lord, that you would guide and lead them as they pour into these young lives and young minds. Lord, for the support personnel, for the administrators, Lord, that you would give them wisdom and guidance. Lord, for the students, that you would uh, form and shape them through this season. Lord, for all of these, that you would cover them in your protection. We know there are uh, many things out there that are uh, distractions, many things out there that are discouragements, many things out there that are additional challenges. And Lord, we just ask for your hand to be on uh, our public schools, on Lakeview, on our homeschoolers, on uh, all of these, Father God, that you would care for them and watch over them, that uh, through this year, uh, these students might come to know you better, might be formed into the women and men you are making them to be, and might understand more fully your purpose for their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now if you'll join me as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father God, as we come before you this day, we ask for your hand to be on us. Lord, we love you. You have done amazing things. Lord, as we look through our own lives and throughout history and throughout your relationship with your people, God, there are so many things that we can call out as examples of your worthiness. For our worship and praise as examples of your love your power your grace your forgiveness your kindness your goodness your justice your holiness lord we just give you praise this day lord we praise you for your hand at work in your people israel a nation of priests set apart to bring salvation to the world we thank you for your coming in christ jesus to bring the fullness of salvation to us on the cross and in the resurrection. Lord, we thank you for calling us to be your church, to be your light and your witness to this world. And we ask that you will help us to live out that witness throughout this week to come. Lord, show us and shape us and mold us that we might radiate your light to this world, that we might truly be, as you called us to be, lamps on stands. A city on a hill that we would radiate not with our own glory, not with our own light, not with our own goodness of any kind, as if we had any at all to bring to the table, but Lord, that we would radiate with your goodness, and your righteousness, your glory, your love, your grace. Lord, show us where you have put in our path this week people who need a word from you, who need to know your forgiveness, your grace, your love, your call on their lives. Lord, open our eyes to see who you are calling us to share your word with this week. And Lord, draw home those.
those in our hearts and minds and lives who don't yet know you as Lord and Savior. Bring them home to you. Even as we lift them up in our hearts now, Lord, draw them to you. Lord, we lift up to you this church and the churches around this community, and we ask that you would show us how to lift you up to all of those who need to hear from you, how to glorify your name. Lord, we lift up to you those who are ministering for you around this community and around the world, uh, the Hui Mission, the uh, uh, Zirkles in Costa Rica, Mana Ministries, uh, so many others, Father God. Our Christian school, Lord Jesus, Lakeview, we lift all of these up to you and ask that they will be witnesses to those that maybe we can't reach, but they can. Lord, we lift up to you the needs of our community. Lord, we know so many who are struggling with COVID in, in our community, in our extended community, in our families and lives. Lord, we lift these up to you for healing and release. Lord, that you would uh, clear their lungs, that you would get the virus out of their system, that you would heal them and restore them in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up to you uh, John Higgins, who uh, uh, has a cold, Father God, and we ask for your healing for him. We lift up to you uh, Nancy Hauser's daughter, Kim, with serious health issues and ask for your healing hand to be upon her. We lift up to you uh, the Herbert's granddaughter, Callie, who's headed off to college, and Lord, so many others we know that are going off to college this year. We ask for your hand to be upon them and protection to be on them, that you would ground them in you in this season. Lord, we lift up to you uh, uh, father-in-law on hospice care, Father God, and ask for your hand to be upon him. Lift up to you, Faye Hamilton, who fell and has four broken ribs, and we ask for your healing for her and wisdom for the doctors as they uh, decide the best course of, of rehab or home care uh, for her recovery. Lord, we lift up to you, Betty Christoph, who's in Balmoral under hospice care and, and fell, and Lord, we ask for your healing hand to be upon her. Uh, we'll continue to lift up to you, Katie Daly and her family, Daryl Heckman and his family, Katrina Villacamp and her family, Gail Parker and her family, and uh, Charles Reynolds and his family through their challenging seasons. And Lord, we ask for your healing and care for them. God, be with us as we go about the work of this week. Guide and lead us in your ways. Show us your path that we may walk with you in everything that we do. Help us to see the traps of the world, the flesh, and the devil for what they are to steer clear. Forgive us when we fail and show us how to offer your grace to those around us who stumble as well, even and especially when their sin is against us. Lord, show us how to honor you with our lives this week. Use us to bring all glory and honor and praise to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we sing to the one who makes a way.
scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Joshua, chapter 5, starting in verse 10. I encourage you to read along in your own Bibles. Uh, we've got Bibles in pews if you need them. It'll be up on the screen as well. You're welcome to read on phones or tablets. And if you don't have a Bible or if you're having a hard time getting into the study of Scripture, please give me a holler. I'd love to point you in the right direction, get some resources in your hand, get you reading this word for yourself. Hear God's word this morning. While the people of Israel were encamped at Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month in the evening on the plains of Jericho. And the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched bread. And the manna ceased the day after they ate of the produce of the land. And there was no longer any manna for the people of Israel, but they ate the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was standing before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take off your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, as we open up your word this morning, we ask that you'll speak to us. Lord, you know the message we need to hear this day. You know our struggles. You know our challenges. You know our hearts, minds, and souls. So Holy Spirit, come and speak to us at the point of our need. Tune our minds, our ears, and our hearts to, tell your, to know your voice and to tell it apart from all others. Speak to us, God. Use whatever words I may offer, but you speak to us, that we may know and do your will and yours alone. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Whose side are you on, anyway? <laughs> Ever hear that? Ever say that? My, uh, I, when I was growing up, if we would be discussing any sort of controversial topic in the house, didn't matter what it was, didn't matter how right or wrong the option was, my dad would deliberately take the other side of whatever it was you were contending for. This had two effects. Number one, it infuriated mom. And number two, it gave you the option to hear the other side and to get a rounded perspective on whatever it was you were discussing. Which is a good thing. But in our world today, we are in such a state where the question of whose side are you on is often... A question of, are you with me or against me? Should I be near you? Can I trust you? Can we be friends? We take these things incredibly seriously, more and more it seems, every month. Now if we were going to take polls in here and raise hands, you know, there's a variety of questions we could find ourselves at odds on. Some of them could be... Lighter and easier, Coke or Pepsi? Tea or coffee? Does sugar belong in cornbread? <laughs> there is a right answer and a wrong answer. <laughs> and I'm not surprised that my kids don't agree. <laughs> but let's think about just the last year, the kinds of questions we found ourselves divided over. Let's see here. How about these things? Should we wear them? Don't answer out loud, please. Should we wear them? Should we not wear them? How many of them should we wear? Where should we wear them? How far apart should we stand? Should we wear them in our cars? Should we wear them when we're outside or just inside close to people? Should we get the vaccine? Is it safe to get the vaccine? 
How do we deal with issues of racism? How should Christians interact with their American citizenship? How about that election last fall? Is the scripture written by God or written by men? And how does that affect how we interpret it? We could easily split the room in any of the church just by having you raise your hands for these. And people have strong opinions about these things, and in many cases, rightly so. We could spend hours debating it. I don't know how it went here, but I know as in LaBelle, we were trying to figure out how do we respond to the early days of the pandemic. We had a lot of batting back and forth and a lot of really strong opinions about how do we do this and how do we do that. And a lot of times we feel very justified in how we come at it. We feel we have the scriptures behind us. We have the science behind us. We have public opinion behind us. We have the right way behind us. And you may well have. But I know for me personally, and, and, and you know, out of my pocket, so I don't know what's mic'd in my pocket, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong, okay. <laughs> but the question often comes down to, are you with me or not on this issue? I don't know about you, but I find myself, I, on my bad days, Looking and saying, okay, does their opinion fit with mine or not? Can I trust these people or are they with that camp? I hate to say it, but on my bad days, I've done it. It's not Christ-like. It's not right. But there's a better question for us. Not, are you with me or are you against me? Are you in my camp or in the enemy's camp? But the question is, am I on the Lord's side? Am I seeking the Lord? As we come to our passage, yes, this follows up uh, beautifully with all we've been talking about over this last week at PBS. We've been talking about Israel wandering in the wilderness and, and, uh, can, and uh, their faithfulness to God and those times that they were often out of sync with God. We lost a whole generation in the wilderness because they refused to be faithful to God to the point where only two, Joshua and Caleb, of that generation made it into the promised land, not even Moses himself. And as they are entering into this land that God has given them, and embarking on the mission that they have been given to go forward into the land and conquer it for the Lord. God has called them to acts of obedience to him. They hadn't been circumcising, which was the sign of the covenant that God had with them. And so all of the males of age were circumcised right as they're going into enemy territory, there's a recovery period for that. And they're in enemy territory. They're putting their trust in the Lord to care for them. And as they're approaching Jericho, there is a man in the road with sword drawn. And Joshua says, are you with us? Or with them. And the one in the sword, the one in the road with the sword says, No. I am the commander of the Lord's army. Are you with me? Now, there's a lot of theories about who this commander is. And one of the traditions is that this isn't just an angel that shows up because if you look, angels don't receive worship. 
Joshua bows down to this angel, and the angel doesn't say, get up. The angel doesn't say, do not fear. The angel says, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. And so the thought is that this is possibly one of several different places in which we see the Son show up. In which we see Christ, the Son of God, show up prior to his taking on of our flesh and blood. And so this is our Savior here who comes to them and says, I am the commander of the Lord's army and I have come. And Joshua rightly, properly drops on his face and aligns himself with God. And as he does, if you keep reading after this, the commander of the Lord's army gives Joshua the battle plan for Jericho. And it's an outrageous plan. I mean, I'll be honest, I can't imagine the buzz in the camp when Joshua comes back from speaking with the commander of the Lord's armies and says, okay, here's the plan. We're just going to march and then blow trumpets. That's it. I don't think people have really changed all that much across 5,000 years of history. So can you imagine the response of somebody today? Somebody comes up and says, okay, here's the plan. This is how we're going to take whatever enemy capital city Let's say during the Gulf War, George Bush comes to his generals and says, okay, here's how we're going to take Baghdad. We're just going to walk around it in a circle and hope that the Lord acts. Now, the plan is a lot more than that, but that's how it's going to sound to people, right? You want us to just march in a circle and blow on trumpets? We're going to conquer the enemy with smooth jazz? What? No, we're going to conquer our enemy by putting our trust in the Lord God himself and letting him do the work. There's a difference. There's a difference between looking around and going, hmm, I wonder if they're on my side or not. And saying, I'm going to trust the Lord and whatever happens, happens. I'm going to walk in obedience to him. I'm going to follow in his footsteps. And whatever comes, comes. It's an attitude of our hearts. When Jesus is meeting with his disciples after the resurrection, he tells Peter, come and follow me. And Peter looks back and he sees John and he says, well, what about him? How often has God called us? And we've been more worried about them than being obedient to him. Jesus says back to him, what is it to you? What I do with him? If I decide he's going to stay alive until I come back again, what is that to you? Which, of course, started a rumor. That he wasn't going to die until Jesus came back the second time. It wasn't true. John attests to that himself. But how often when God says, follow me, do we say, well, what about those guys? What about that camp? What about that group? Just follow me. It's a positioning of our heart. We should rightly take the views that we feel the Lord is laying upon our hearts. We should rightly walk in obedience and stand for what we understand to be true. But we should also be gracious with those who do not share our views. We don't need to be ashamed of the truth. We definitely don't need to refrain from speaking the truth. But it also probably took us time to get to that truth, didn't it? We didn't start there. 
We need to operate out of humility, out of patience, and out of grace, recognizing that we may not have all the answers, but he does. And we're going to do our best to follow the answers he gives us. The more we are concerned about whether or not we are walking rightly with the Lord, the less the bickering matters. The more we lift up in prayer those we find ourselves on opposite sides with, the less the fight matters. It can get easy to be caught up. Everything right now seems to be partisan politics. Focus instead on the Lord. We talk about not living as the world lives, and so frequently our definition of worldly things is more about what the guys on the other side of the tracks are doing. I'm going to tell you, I think one of the big allures of the world is simply to choose sides and to be contentious about everything. And that temptation wheedles its way in to some of our most important conversations around truth. Because we must stand for truth, but it doesn't make others our enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. If you and I disagree, you're not my enemy. If you and I are on opposite sides of the fence, if we voted for different presidential candidates back in the fall, if we come to different conclusions about masks and vaccines, you're not my enemy and I'm not yours. The enemy is the one who wants to pit us against each other instead. We wrestle against the powers of darkness in this world. Spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realms. And that battle is not Republican against Democrat, conservative versus liberal. That battle is the Lord of hosts against the darkness that cannot overcome him. So don't worry about which side of the fence you're on. Worry about being on the Lord's side. Seek the Lord and let him lead you. Let's pray. Almighty God, show us what obedience to you looks like. Jesus, you said if we love you, we'll obey your commands. You have called us to walk in your steps and in your ways. Help us to focus on being faithful to you in everything that we do. To not worry about what's going on with everybody else around us. But simply to teach and proclaim your truth. That all may come to know you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's of course hard to follow Jesus if we don't keep our eyes on him. Mm -hmm. So may he be our vision as we leave this place. Won't you rise with me as we sing together today?